Hello everyone, I am here today to talk to you about my latest Raspberry Pi creation. Uh, I've been working, this is pretty much my first project since I've uh, got this Raspberry Pi other than just some other little piddly things, but I've made an IP camera basically is what I've done. Um, so this was originally a Kana kit Raspberry Pi, it was a Model B, it was like a complete starter kit. There's all the information if you're interested. Um, but it came with uh, the Raspberry Pi itself, the Model B, uh, the case, and a power supply for it, and just some other little odds and ends. It came with an SD card with uh, the new out-of-box software installed on it and everything. So anyway, for this project, I have paired this with a Eddie Max USB Wi-Fi dongle. Uh, it's, I think it's 802.11 in, but it's probably running at a G. I don't really know. A 8 gigabyte micro SD card. Uh, I just got it inside the regular Raspberry Pi SD card adapter that they sent with the project. Uh, what else do I have? On the ras on the SD card I'm running Raspbian, but I'll get into that here in a second. Uh, I've also paired this with a 11,200 milliamp battery, so I can do this, you know, just like sit it and then just leave it and walk away. It'd be fine right now. My battery's dead, so I'm running it off this little USB cable right now and that's got it powered. Uh, what else do I do? I got a micro USB cable just round up in the back here to get power from the battery to the Pi itself and a couple zip ties to hold the whole thing together. Now about the SD card uh, I want to show you a couple things so let's, let's go ahead and jump into it here. Um, let's go ahead and sit this kind of over there All right, so got a couple things going on. I got my webcam here, down right and underneath me. I've got a capture from VLC that I have set up that appears to be lagged out pretty bad. You know, let's just go ahead and reboot the Pi. I'm just gonna reboot it. So I'm just gonna unplug the power and plug it back in, and we'll let that boot up. It takes just a minute to boot up. Uh, you can see some activity lights on this side and whenever it does boot up the camera module here will have a LED that goes off. I did um, let's make this full screen. I did uh, mount the camera module in here and this is the Pi No IR, the Pi Nor camera module. So it, it has the IR filter taken out of it. Uh, so that makes great security cameras, especially if you have infrared LED lights or something. If you want to pair it with some other IP cameras that you already existing have, it can kind of use some of those IR lights if it's in the close proximity. But uh, so <laughs> here's a hole that I drilled on the wrong side the first time. Uh, stupid me. But I just mounted it in there with hot glue and it seems to hold pretty good. I uh, haven't had many problems at all out of the actual camera module. It seems to run pretty solid. The Pi itself is a little bit slow. Uh, kind of has some issues with speed, you know, especially if you're trying to do something pretty pro processor or resource intensive. So let's see, it's still booting up there, isn't it? Okay, so now I've got my LED on on my camera module, so I should be able to go ahead and get some of these things started. Let's see, over here, I'm going to open up a network stream, and I got motion running on 8081. So let's see if it'll pick that up. Okay, and it did and down okay so down this one is vlc down two is firefox so let's go ahead and stop that and uh maybe i can uh just close the uh, let's just go ahead and close firefox and relaunch it there we go so i've noticed the vlc picks it up a little bit better firefox uh it crashes a lot and both of these running with motion are incredibly laggy I and mean, there's like five seconds lag it's, it's almost ridiculous um, you know this Raspberry Pi might not be in the best condition though it did take a topple off the edge of a desk I elbowed it off the edge of my desk rolling around in my rolly chair and uh, it did break the SD card slot so here's what's left of the SD card tray there I had to order another one for like five bucks and I soldered it on yesterday I'm terrible at soldering so this is like my third attempt to solder the thing on there that it finally started booting up so it's probably kind of sketchy but you know it, it is what it is it's a $35 computer who really cares so 
let's see here. What do we need to do? Um, you can see them both capturing now. Uh, VLC is a little bit better. It seems than Firefox, like I said. But let's go ahead and get into this. What do I want to show you? First off, I want to show you the Wi-Fi config. So, of course, you fail. Let's go ahead and get another putty session open here. Try to SSH back into it. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so I'm going to log in with my default SSH credentials. I haven't changed them, I probably should. Okay, so first thing I want to show you T slash network. So the one one of the problems that I had was I don't have a keyboard or a monitor or anything connected to this thing so how do I make sure that it hops on the right Wi-Fi network and that's that's what this is right here WPA Roam and what this does is it uses this uh, WPA supplicant is a little conf, conf file and that's where you actually enter in all your different networks and things I'm not going to show you that because it has my passwords in plain text but uh, so you just have like network name entry and then um, you have like encryption type and then the password and then SSID and just uh, you can google that you can find out exactly what you need to do that's what I was using um, I did try WICD is a little Linux package that actually gives you a GUI but I found that it kind of pegs the processor a little bit more than I think it should and with a computer this low in resources I need all the processing power that I could get so this does have to INET does have to be set to manual on WLAN 0 uh, so you can't really do DHCP you can um, I'm sure that you could like declare a static IP address range down in here if you wanted to but I just have this reserved through our DHCP server here I just made a reservation for this uh, USB dongles uh, Wi-Fi or MAC address so whenever it sees it on this access point here then it'll pop it up but if it goes to a different access point then uh, it probably won't get the same IP address we have a lot of weird VLAN issues around here so gotta figure out something for that maybe in the future if I would take all these JPEGs and like just dump them into another server till I could just always get to that server then I just need the one-way communication from the Pi to the server just to dump the files and then I could stream them out of there that might be something to look into in the future but uh, let's see what else do I want to show you I am to s the actual streaming package that I'm using is motion at the moment uh, I tried MJPEG streamer and I want to talk about that too but let's talk about motion first so let's look at the motion dot conf file oh man I'm half brain dead today that's not where it is at all it's actually slash etc slash motion that's, that's where I pointed it to come on and if I actually put all the letters in there we go Okay, so this is a motion.conf file right here. Daemon is on, so it does auto start. Uh, let's see. I'm not really too worried about any of these uh, basic settings or anything. Motion is packed full of different features that you can use, and it, it's just crazy. I mean, the, this one log file right here is at least a couple hundred lines long. Do, do, do. Let me get out of the section that I actually want to show you. been wanting to make this video for a while I was going to make it last week but then I dropped it off the desk and had to wait for a new uh, SD card tray to get to me in the mail here's where you can change your um, your video codec that you're encoding it with I'm using the MS MPEG 4 and I read somewhere that you need that one to use it with VLC might have been right up in here somewhere I don't know but uh, the, you can choose, there's a bunch of different ones, like you can do it to SWF or FLV or MOV or OGG, whatever your flavor is. Um, let's keep going down. Text display for the uh, timestamp. Uh, target directory where it actually uh, dumps JPEGs whenever it detects motion. I'm not worried about motion detection 
with this at all really for right now um, I'm really just worried about it streaming the live feed and then I can pick it up with something else I mean I could pump this into blue iris if I wanted to like the uh, DVR software that you can buy for like $30 uh, I actually don't have a subscription, so I haven't really played around with it too much. This is what I wanted to show you, the live stream server. Now, this is where you declare the port, so I have it declared on 8081, which I'm pretty sure is the default. Actually, now it says the default is zero, so I just said 8081. Uh, the stream quality is 100 here, 100% 100 JPEG quality. And, you know, it, that was on 75, and it seemed like it was doing a little bit better, so I'm actually going to bump that back down to 75. Um, the number pad doesn't work. 75 and maximum frame rate is 30 frames per second. That's fine for now. You know, I could really adjust these a lot better and probably make it stream, but this is sort of just a proof of concept and I don't care if it lags a little a few seconds which it does lag about five seconds it really does mjpx streamer seems to be do a little bit better uh with motion you can do a http based control so like i could uh browse to port 8080 and actually get to all these settings in like a web page gui style so that's about all that there is for the motion.com file i'm going to go ahead and save these settings and uh you know, let's not even test them out. I want to try to show you MJPEG Streamer and see if I can get it up and working. So let's uh, f find out the where motion is and kill it. Sudo Q2526. Okay, so you can see that, that pretty much hosed everything up. Um, let's see. I'm not going to show you how to install MJPEG Streamer, but there's about three commands that need to be run. First, a folder needs to be created in the uh, temp directory. <sighs> oh, file exists. Look at that. Let's go look in there. Yep, it sure it is. Right there it is. Anyway, that's where the, it actually dumps the JPEGs to. So if you don't have that folder, go ahead and make it. I already have it made because I installed this the other day. And the other one is to start Raspy Steel. So uh, get this out of the way over here. You can look at that for a second. Let's look at Raspy Steel here. Okay, so this is the command for Raspy Steel. And what this does is it actually starts dumping JPEGs uh, at the rate of one, ev one every 100 milliseconds. So I'm going to change that to one every two milliseconds. So every two milliseconds, it's going to dump a frame, a, a new JPEG. So there we go with that. Um, I'm going to need to start up another putty session, actually. Start up another one. Capture Putty to Let's just do a monitor capture. And I'm pretty sure that's on monitor too. Nope, that's not on monitor too. That's not the one that I wanted. Properties. Is it monitor 3? I think it is monitor 3. Nope. These are the problems of having too many monitors. You don't know where they are. Gosh, is it monitor 4? Yes, it is monitor 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and maximize that. And we'll edit the scene and bring it down a little bit. So here. Here's the other putty session that I have here, and the other command that I have to issue is to start um, the actual streaming service itself, like the www part of it. So if I do that, uh, 
that should be pretty much started. So let's go ahead and we'll get rid of this one and we'll try this in Firefox. So look, two down. And this is actually on 8080 this time. MJPEG Streamer runs over 8080. So as you can see, that makes it a little bit nicer. Let's bring this one up a little bit. So I can just go right over here and like click on stream. Do, 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 do. Making myself into a liar. Let's try Java. Why not? Why not try Java? Um. Okay, so apparently there's something wrong with MJPEG Streamer. <sighs> what could be wrong? So, any body session. Oh, uh, you know, I think I think I know exactly what it is. Okay, let's go back over here. I'm gonna bring this one down again. I think I know exactly what's wrong. that. Let's go back over here to our other putty session. And this should be stopping now. Okay. Just kind of going to leap here. Okay. Have to pseudo it. Imagine that. So now that we got that going, let's go back over here to our other terminal and run our MJPEG streamer again. Okay, now that that's going, let's go back over here and click on stream. Boom, there you go. So, one thing that I have noticed about streaming with this is the lag is a little bit different. So, watch it here. Um, mark. 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 You know, so it, it does drop some frames, but it's supposed to be dumping one in every two milliseconds. That's like at least 30 frames a second I'd say. I don't really know. So there's a couple different things within MJPEG Streamer. You can stream it to Java, you can stream it as JavaScript. Does the JavaScript actually move? Holy crap it does, look at that. So that's kind of neat. I'll, it gives you a lot of different options and um, I'm guess sure you could probably pull this out and dump it into another program. Uh, one program that I really need uh, for my main Uh, one thing, one program that I do really use for all my IP cameras is the IP Cam Viewer on my Android device. So uh, I know with Motion I can get this to work. It's just a general HTTP-based webcam. Uh, I haven't tried it with MJPEG Streamer too much, but I'm not exact. I can't pick it up with VLC. I do know that. Well, I might be able to, but I haven't got it to work yet. So all this is still in the works. Um, anyway final impressions this is a super fun little piece of hardware I think it's a great deal at $35 um, realistically though if I wanted an IP camera with the money I have in this I could just go buy an IP camera for like 64 or $65 off loot you know whenever they have a sales and that would be much more stable than this um, but you know it's a fun build and I could I love these Raspberry Pis uh, this is really the first main project that I've done with one and actually made a video about it. I hope to do a lot more. Uh, I'd like to get one just as a little sp to put on the back of my TV to stream stuff from my Plex server and everything to it, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, this is Alex and hope that helps somebody out.